Today we're going to learn how to use CSS when we want to make a website. And in the first episode of this course here, I talked a bit about what HTML and CSS actually was. So just to do a recap, HTML is the actual content that we put inside the website, which you can see right here. Right now I have a index.html file, which is the front page. And inside this file, we have a bit of tags and some content. So if we were to actually go inside the browser, refresh, you guys can see we have a header that says this is the title. And then we have a piece of text saying lorem ipsum. So as you guys can see right now, the text doesn't look very pretty. And what we can do in order to change up how this text looks like or any other kind of elements inside the website is we can go ahead and add some styling to it. Now styling is basically used to change up how the HTML is going to look like inside the browser. And we do that using CSS. So the first thing we're going to do in this episode is I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to actually create CSS inside your HTML file. And then afterwards, I'm going to show you guys how to create something called a style sheet, which is an Axios CSS file that we use inside the website. And this is how we mostly create websites using a style sheet. And we don't really create styling directly inside the HTML file. So basically in the future episodes, we will be using a style sheet and we won't be styling directly inside the HTML file because that's not the typical way we do it inside real projects. Now, after we talked about styling, I also want to show you guys something called the reset style sheet, which is something we need to have inside any kind of web project because basically when we have a browser such as Chrome or Firefox or Edge or Internet Explorer, they're all going to have some default styling inside the browsers right now. If you guys were to actually look at this, you may notice that if I were to zoom in, that we do actually have some spacing right before the text, you know, from the top of the browser and the left side of the text. And that's because right now Chrome has some default styling inside the browser, meaning that if I were to go inside my developer tool, which I showed you guys in the previous episode by right clicking on the text, go down to inspect. You guys can see that right now we have these weird orange boxes on top of the text and below it, which basically means that right now the text has been pushed to have some spacing on the top and the bottom. And we want to reset all of this inside our code before we actually do get started on any kind of web project. So we're going to go ahead and learn about that at the end of this episode. So what we're going to do first here is we're going to go ahead and just exit out here, go back inside our code. And the first thing we can do in order to actually style something directly inside the HTML file is if I were to go up inside my head tag up here, I can actually go inside the head tag and create something called a style html element so right now you guys can see we have a pair of style tags and inside the style tags we can actually go ahead and create css code now we haven't really talked about css code yet so just a few basics on what the syntax is when it comes to css code and by the way before you get frustrated that we have to learn css also it is really the most easy language you can learn inside coding because it's so simple to actually use so the first thing we're going to do here is i want to style my h2 tag down here which has the title inside of it that says this is the title so inside my style sheet i'm going to go ahead and say that we have a h2 tag so i'm just going to say h2 space then i'm going to say we have curly brackets opening and closing brackets and then i'm going to go and go in between these brackets here so now you guys can see we have the closing tag at the bottom here and we have the opening tag right after the the actual h2 definition here. So right now we actually told the code that we want to style the h2 tag. And we did that by actually putting the h2 tag inside the style elements we have here. So inside the curly brackets, I'm going to define what I want to change about the h2 tag. So right now we could actually say we want to change the color of the text. So I can say color colon, and then I can go ahead and define what the color of the text should be inside the code here. So I can actually say that I want to have a red text. Then after I defined the color, I want to say semicolon. So the basic thing here is that each time we want to style a specific thing, we type the keyword for that specific styling. Then we say colon, which means that now we need to tell it what we want to do with the styling, such as changing the color to red. And then once we're done with this line, we're going to go ahead and close off the line with a semicolon. And it's very important that you guys remember to put a semicolon after each line here, because I see a lot of people saying that the code doesn't work or something doesn't change inside the browser always make sure you add a semicolon after the end of the line here, okay? Before you go up to the next line. So now if we were to save the code, go inside my browser, refresh, you guys can see that the color changed to red, okay? So what we could also do is we could go back inside the code, go down below the color, and say that we want to change the font size. So I can actually say font dash size colon, and now we need to define what the font size should be. So right now we could say we want to have 
70 pixels, which is quite a lot inside the browser. And remember to add the semicolon. And then I'm going to go and open up the browser, refresh. And now you guys can see we have a much bigger font inside the browser. Now let's actually go and try to manually remove the, the margin that we talked about when I did actually right click and inspect the text. So as you guys can see, we have all the orange stuff on top of and below the actual text. So if we were to go back inside the code and say that we want to also change the margin, colon, semicolon, and say that I want to have zero pixels of margin on the top, left, right, and bottom by just saying zero pixels and go back inside my browser, refresh, and now you guys can see that the spacing disappeared. Now, what we could also do here just to kind of mess around with the code, let's actually go ahead and add a background color inside this text here. So we can actually say background dash color, colon, then we could actually say blue, semicolon, Go in and refresh the browser, you guys can see that now we have a blue background color behind the text here. So we can do a bunch of stuff when it comes to styling and if I want to send to the text inside the website, I can also say something called text dash align colon center semicolon, save it, refresh the browser and now you guys can see we have the text centered inside the website. So now we just start the H2 tag inside the browser and we're not going to talk too much today about all the different stylings that we have inside CSS. But as we move on this course here, I will show you guys more code when it comes to CSS in order to change different things such as text or boxes inside the website. But we're not going to do it today because it's quite a lot of code that we would have to go through in just one episode. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and change the styling of my paragraph tag as well. So if we want to add more stylings inside our website, what we can do is after the curly bracket that closes off the h2 tag up here, I can go down to next line and say I want to style the paragraph tag. Then again, we add the curly brackets, go in between the brackets, and then we can do the exact same thing. Now, if I want to change the color of my paragraph text, what we can actually do here instead of using red, because that is not very professional to use, is we can go ahead and use a couple of different formats. Now we could use RGB, we could use hex. So let's actually go ahead and add a hex color to this paragraph. So I can actually say hashtag, and then to give it maybe a dark gray color, we can go ahead and say 999999, which is six nines. I can go ahead and save it, go inside the browser, then refresh. And as you guys can see, now we have a very darkest grayish color inside the text here instead of just black. We can also go back inside the code and say that I want to have maybe a white color for the text and go ahead and say F, 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 F. Now I do want to point out that if we're using a color that has the same letters or numbers all the way through it, we don't need to put six F's inside the hex color. We can actually go ahead and just stick with three. So if I save it, go inside the browser, refresh, you guys can see the text disappeared, but it didn't really because it's just white. So we can't really see it inside the browser on a white background, okay? Now another color type we could also use is RGB. So if we were to go down and give it a background color, we can go ahead and say RGB parentheses semicolon because we need to end off each line with a semicolon. And then inside the parentheses, we can go ahead and say we want to change the red value. So we can go ahead and say zero comma, then the green value, which is zero comma, and then the blue value, which is going to be zero as well. If we were to save this, go inside the browser, you guys can see that we have a black background. And that's because the RGB value we just gave it by saying 0, 0, 0 is going to be black. We could also change the first one to 255, go back inside the browser, and now you guys can see it turns red. So now I just learned how to add styling inside the HTML file, but let's go ahead and talk about how to add styling directly inside any kind of HTML element. So we're to go down inside the H2 tag here, say space, we can actually go ahead and add an attribute called style. So we say style is equal to double quotes. Then inside the double quotes, we can actually go ahead and write CSS code just like we did inside the style tags. So we want to change the background color. I can say background dash color colon semicolon. I can go ahead and say I want this one to be the hex color of a very light gray color. So I can actually say F3, 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 save it, go inside my browser. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the browser and you guys will notice that the background of the text here will actually turn into a light gray color. So when I refresh, you guys can see now it turns light gray. So we can actually go ahead and add stylings directly inside HTML elements. But like I said, this is not really the way we usually do it inside a typical website. Typically, we would actually create a CSS file that has all the CSS code inside of it. So what I can do here is I can actually go ahead and say we have a new file. 
save it inside our root folder and I'm going to go ahead and save this one as style.css. Now one thing I want to mention here is that you don't have to call it style the CSS, but if you want to create some websites in the future that might have a CMS system inside of it, which some of you guys may not know what is yet, then I recommend you make it a habit to call it style the CSS because you will be required inside WordPress at least to call it style the CSS later on if you want to use a CMS system. So just make it a habit to call it style the CSS. Then we're going to go ahead and save it. And one thing I want to point out here before we actually start creating styling inside the style sheet is that you can in fact have multiple style sheets inside your website. Now, typically, at least in my cases, I don't use more than one style sheet because it makes it too confusing having to have multiple documents open just to change styling inside a website. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is now that we have a style sheet inside the website, if I were to go ahead and say we want to style the H2 tag, open up the curly brackets and then say I want to style the h2 tag for example giving it a different color I'm going to say color colon red semicolon and save it you guys will notice that inside the browser it doesn't actually change the color and that's because right now even though we have a style sheet inside the root folder we haven't linked to it inside the HTML file so if I were to go inside my head tag here we can actually go ahead and go to the next line and we're going to go ahead and create an HTML element called link so I'm going to open up my tag here. I'm going to say link space. Then I'm going to say rel and set it equal to style sheet. Just to define what kind of link this is. Then I'm going to go afterwards and add a second attribute, which is going to be the link to the actual style sheet. So I can actually say href, which stands for hyperreference, equal to double quotes. And then we need to create the actual path to the style sheet. Now right now if I were to go inside my root folder, you guys can see that the style sheet is actually right next to the index file. So we don't need to tell it to go inside any kind of folders or anything. So we can just go ahead and write style.css. And then I'm going to go ahead and end off the tag here. Now the link tag is actually an empty element, meaning that we're not going to have a closing tag. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And now go inside my browser, refresh. And now you guys can see we have the text red. So we can actually go ahead and go inside the style sheet here and create a bunch of styling. For example, for the paragraph tag, if we wanted to, and we can go ahead and create all bunch of stylings inside the style sheet. Now, right now, I showed you guys how to target specific elements inside the website with the tags here called H2 and the paragraph tag. So right now, if I were to just say that we want to style the H2, if I were to have another H2 tag below here somewhere inside the website, right now, both of these tags, if we were to save it, refresh the browser, are going to be red and we don't want to have all the different h2 tags inside our website to be red so we can in fact using styling change the path to the actual element so right now it just says h2 meaning that all h2 tags inside the website are going to be red so what i can also do inside my styling is if i were to put the the second h2 inside a div box and just go ahead and paste it in here so i'm going to say copy and move it and then go inside my styling here, I can actually go ahead and say that we have not a paragraph tag, but inside the website somewhere, we have a div tag. And inside the div tag, we have an h2 tag. So I say space, h2, and then I open up the curly brackets, meaning that inside the website, if we have an h2 tag inside a div, then it's going to apply the styling here. So I can actually go ahead and say color is going to be green, semicolon, save it, refresh the browser, and now you guys can see that this one down here turns green. Now you might be asking, well, are we just going to go ahead and use divs each time we're going to go ahead and target specific elements inside the website with styling? And no, that is, that's not really the optimal way to do it. Instead, we usually use something called classes and IDs in order to target specific elements inside our HTML files. So if we were to actually go inside my HTML file, we're not going to learn too much about it in this episode, but just to demonstrate what I mean that we can actually target specific elements using classes and IDs, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys one example here. So we're to delete the div tag and go inside my h2 tag, say space, and then I can go ahead and add an attribute called a class equal to double quotes. And then I can give this h2 tag some kind of name. I can choose whatever I want to. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say title. So right now we have an h2 tag inside our HTML file called title. So if we go inside my style sheet, I can actually define that I want to target this specific h2 tag by saying I want to target the tag that has a class by saying punctuation called title. 
So now if we were to go back inside the website, you guys can see that the title is still green. But like I said, don't worry too much about it because we will be talking about classes and IDs and how they affect the website in a couple episodes from now. Now the last thing I want to talk about here before we actually end off this episode is something called a reset start sheet. Because right now if we were to go inside the website, like I said inside different browsers, we will have some default styling inside the website such as spacing or font sizes or something else. And the problem with this is that right now if we were to create a website that looks the way I wanted to inside Chrome, if we were to use it inside Firefox, then some things might change inside the styling of the website. So it does actually change how it looks like. And I don't want to have that inside different browsers. So we need to make sure we reset the default browser styling we have inside any kind of browser. So the way I'm going to go ahead and create a reset style sheet is that I'm going to go ahead and go up inside my tab here, just create a new tab. And I'm going to go ahead and search for reset style sheet. And then inside Google here, we can go down to at least the second link inside my search here. I will leave a link in the description for this specific page here. And as you guys can see inside this page here called HTML5 Doctor, we have a person here called Richard Clark, and he did actually create a reset code. So what I can do here is I can actually go ahead and copy the code he has and scroll all the way down to the bottom here. So I can actually say we want to copy till here, copy it, go inside my style sheet, go to the very top of the style sheet, and paste it in here. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And then as you guys can see, now we have a bunch of styling inside our style sheet. And don't worry, you don't need to know what these means. You just need to have them inside your style sheet. So don't worry too much about it if you don't understand some of the code that we just pasted in, okay? So at the bottom here, we do actually have our own code that we just created. And then at the top here, we have the reset styling. Now, one thing that is really important to point out here is that when you do actually load up a website inside the browser, it's going to load your files by looking at it from the top to bottom, meaning that the reset styling inside the style sheet has to be the first code inside your style sheet. Because if I were to create my own code down here in the bottom and instead of having it at the top instead, then it's going to load up my code and then afterwards it might reset the code by actually loading up the styling that we have inside the reset style sheet afterwards. So we don't want to have that, okay? So the reset styling has to be the first thing inside your style sheet. Now, if we were to go back inside the browser, go inside my website, refresh, you guys can see that all the content jumps up together in the top left corner. And even the font size has changed inside our text, meaning that right now, everything inside our code here doesn't have a default styling inside my Chrome browser, okay? And we want to have that in order to make sure that everything looks the same inside all browsers. So this is basically what I want to show you guys today. We're gonna go ahead and talk more about the different CSS stylings that we're gonna go ahead and use inside our websites a bit later on in this course here. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.